We would like to welcome you to this online worship service at Trinity Lutheran Church in Bellingham, Washington. It's always such a joy to come to you in your home or wherever you are today and be part of your world and be part of Trinity. And as we come into your world, we just have good news to share. We have a God who loves us. Oh, a God who adores us. And we will hear about that. But one of the things that we also do in our worship service is we sing. We sing. And today we're going to have some great songs. And we just ask, wherever you're at, come, join your voices with ours, and praise our mighty good God.
There are so many special, memorable times in our lives. And they probably happen at special places as well. One of the things that comes to my mind is November 28th. Do you remember what happened on that many years ago? I do. I do. Almost 40 years ago. You and I stood at my home church, Trinity Lutheran in Crookston, Minnesota, and we exchanged vows. We did it before family and friends. We also did it before God. It's something which many people do. We gather together in front of God, in front of an altar. And during that service, in many ways, I was confessing my love to you. And then I was also making a promise. And you also made a promise yeah. that with God's help, we're gonna try as best we can to love and cherish each other. There's something else special happening in our live worship service this week. I remember the day I was confirmed. It was a big deal in my life to come before God, before my friends and family, and confess that I wanted to continue to follow Jesus. And I made that vow that I would continue to follow Jesus in my confirmation vows. And when we think of vows, it sounds so old fashioned. I like to think of them as promises. So just as when we got married, we promised to love each other. And in confirmation, we were reminded of God's great love for us. 
and we recommit ourselves to loving him. And it's not just something that we are to do once. Every day of our life, God would like us to, to let him know that we love him. Just as I tell you, I love you, and you tell me what? I love you. It's something that we do in close relationships. And so in close relationships, we talk about the joys, we talk about the short sorrows in life, and as our service continues, we're gonna go to God, the God who loves us and whom we love with our concerns and prayers. Dear Father, in the gospel lesson for today, your son brought healing and life to others. We also believe that through Christ, you have given us healing and life. Yet we don't deserve what you have done for us, for we have not always been faithful to you, but you are a God of compassion. Thank you for your grace and your forgiveness in Jesus. May it move us to love you more and more. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, come to the aid of those who are persecuted because they believe in Jesus. Shield them. We also ask you to defend all your missionaries, especially when they are met with hostility and rejection. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Fill the people of Trinity with gentleness, generosity, and compassion. Help us to reflect Jesus' goodness to everyone we meet. Let your church become a haven of grace to everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We lift before you those in need. Today, we remember Don and Vicki, Bob, Alberta and David. Mike, Henry, Priscilla. And on this day, we also think of our confirmants. We think of Malia and Sam and ask Heavenly Father that you would be with them. And as they, again, state their love for you, that you would continue to draw them close to you throughout their life. Continue to also be with Trinity as yes as we are looking to, to bring someone else on board to, to help with the ministry that is happening here. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear and graciously answer our prayers, dear Lord, as it is best for us and most glorifies your holy name. All this we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, today we're going to be talking about promises. We all make promises. For example, I make promises. I have grandchildren. They live far away. I visit with them. I tell them how much I love them. And what I also say is, someday I'm going to come and I'm going to visit you. That's a promise. A promise is saying what you're going to do. And I look for that forward to that time when I'm able to be with my children. We all make promises. Maybe you've made promises. For example, your parents have told you to clean up your room. And you say, Mom and Dad, I promise I'm going to clean up my room. I'm going to pick up my toys. I'm going to, I'm going to straighten it up. That's a promise you make. Do you always keep your promises? I don't, because sometimes I cannot do that. But as we gather here today, I want to talk to you about someone who actually keeps his promises, and that is God. And what are some of the promises that God has given to us? Well, first of all, I want you to know we find them in the Bible. And so that's why the Bible is something which is so very important for us because it, it contains the promises of God. And one of the things that God has promised is he was going to clean up all of the mess that, that is in this world. And especially the mess because we don't love others as we should and we don't love God as we should. And God was true to that promise because what he did was he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this world. Now I have a cross here and on this cross I have a, have a heart because as I think about the cross, I think about Jesus and I think about God keeping his promise, his promise of cleaning things up, but also his promise to love us. In fact, that's why God sent Jesus 
For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God has made promises to you and me. And throughout your life, I think it's important to be able to hold on to those promises, just as it is important to hold on to Jesus. But as we think about the promises which God has made for us, I also encourage you to think about how you may then tell God what you hope to do. Because God has loved us so much, we seek to also return that by making a promise, by saying, God, I'm going to try to love you as well. Because God loves us, he also encourages us to love one another. Not to be mean to others, not to yell at them, but to be kind, to listen to our parents and become the best that we can be. It's not always easy to do. It's not easy to always keep those promises. But remember, because God kept his promise in sending us a savior, any things that we have done wrong are forgiven. And then that moves us then to love God and love others all the more because we have been shown goodness. So maybe you could talk to your parents or grandparents about some of the promises that they have made and how important they are, but above all, about the promises that God has made for you in Jesus Christ. The Old Testament lesson comes from the third chapter of Lamentations. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him offer his cheek to one who would strike him, and let him be filled with disgrace. For men are not cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. For he does not unwillingly bring affliction or grief to the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the fifth chapter of St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. And when Jesus has crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and alive. And he went with him, and a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had had discharge of blood for twelve years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard reports about Jesus, and it came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house someone who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. 
and he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, but he put them outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and in, went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was of 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this. And he told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. To begin this message, I would like to make some statements. If you have never had any problems or trials in your life, then this sermon may not apply to you. Or if you do not think that you will ever have any heartache, pain, suffering, or discouragement, well, then this message may not be for you. However, if you have experienced those things or realize that in the future they are coming your way, well, then this message is for you and not just for you alone. One of the things that I truly appreciate about the, the Gospels, as well as 
all of the Bible, is that it gives a, a good picture of life here on earth with all of its joys, but with all of its disappointments and sorrows as well. The Bible doesn't ignore sickness, pain, suffering, evil, or even death. It is there for all of us to see. But what it also shows us is a Savior. And because there is a Savior, we have something to hold on to. We have hope. In the gospel lesson for today, we come across three people who seem to be without hope. There is a, a girl who is at the end of her short life. Mark does not go into details about her. He says nothing about how long she has suffered, how long she has been sick. We only know that she is 12 years old and she's at the point of death. She is just hanging by a thread. And then there is her father, Jairus. Like any parent of a child who is extremely sick, he is desperate to find help for her. Fighting his way through the crowds, he, he finally gets to Jesus. And falling at the feet of Jesus, he pleads with Jesus to come and, and just touch her, lay his hands upon her. He is hanging on by a thread. And in the gospel lesson, we also come across a woman who is beset by a, a condition of bleeding. Suffering has been her companion for as long as that little girl has been alive. She has been doctoring for 12 years. For 12 years, she has been spending everything that she had. And after 12 years, she has nothing to show for it except more pain and empty pockets. She is just hanging on by a thread. All three of these people were desperate. They had great need. They were hanging on by a thread. And it is not a secure position to be in unless, of course, that thread that you are hanging on to is Jesus. And that is what I would like to highlight today. And what I want you to remember, but not just you, but in our worship service, we will actually be confirming two young ladies from our congregation. And one of the things that I would like to share with Samantha and Malia is that in this life, with all of its ups and downs, we have Jesus to hold on to. And that is what faith is all about. Faith is holding on to Jesus and the promises which he has given to us. To be sure, God has blessed us with many other things. He has given us family, friends, and a church family. God has blessed us with, with doctors and, and much technology. But they can only do so much. Are you in pain? Have you suffered a loss? Are you experiencing loneliness? Please understand this. While we are hopeless or helpless, God is not. Jesus cares. Do you feel alone? Jesus was alone. He was abandoned by his friends, his disciples. He was deserted by justice and compassion. Have people told lies about you? They did the same thing to Jesus. Do you feel betrayed? Jesus was betrayed with a kiss. Are you helpless? Well, Jesus specializes in helping the helpless. He always has done for them what they themselves could not do. For example, in order to fulfill God's requirements of living a perfect life, Jesus came here to earth to do that for all of humankind. And when they were unable to pay the debt that they owed God for their sins, Jesus went to the cross so that debt may be canceled. And in order that the consequences of sin and death may be overcome, Jesus rose from the dead. And because of that, we have this good news. 
for all people who are helpless in so many ways, including you and me, there is hope. We are not beyond God's love or Jesus' power. This is the good news that we rejoice over. Faith acknowledges what God has done for us and, and what a marvelous God he is. And in our live worship service, we will have our young ladies confess their faith in this God as they recite the words of the Apostles' Creed. However, it is important to understand that there are forces out there in this world who would like us to let go of Jesus and the promises which he has made. When I was in junior high and high school, one of the things that I enjoyed doing so very much with family, with friends, and at school was playing different sports. Two of the sports that I enjoyed were, were basketball and football. Now, in basketball and football, there is a strategy as you're playing against another team. Of course, you want to win and you want them to lose. Well, how can you contribute to having the other team lose? Well, you do that by trying to get the ball away from them or having them lose it. So in basketball and football, what you would try to do is intercept the ball or you would try to knock it out of the hands of the opposing team. Of course, when you were on the offense, you wanted to hold on to the ball because by holding on to it, you had a chance of, of scoring and then more chance of winning. I bring this up because as we look at our lives in Jesus Christ, God has gifted us with faith. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, he has, he has made us come to see Jesus as that one who lived, died, and rose again for us. And because of that, we are truly winners. However, there are forces out there in this world that would like us to lose. And the way for us to lose eternally is to let go of Jesus and our faith in him. God has given you that gift of faith, but Satan and the world at times seeks to, seeks to bring about disappointment, depression, doubt, or distraction so that you let go of him. And there are many ways that they try to do it, and today I would just like to highlight a few. One way in which Satan is, is working in this world is, is trying to bring doubt into people's minds so that they don't believe there is a God or that there is a creator. He would like to make us think that we are just by ourselves and that's just how life is. Another way in which he tries to bring about despair is to make us think that maybe your problem is just too big for God. Or maybe you are just so small that God could care less about who you are. You may feel at times in your life that everyone else has forgotten about you, so God must also have forgotten about me. I heard a story some time ago about a woman who was dying of AIDS. This was at a time when there was no good treatment for it. And having AIDS meant that you had a death sentence. Although she had been a faithful wife, her husband was not. She contracted the illness from him and then he left her. And as the case was many years ago, the woman soon felt deserted by friends and family, scared of, of what she had. And while she was alone and lonely in her hospital room, she asked for a chaplain to come and visit her. He did not know what he would be able to, to do to, to lift her spirits, but she was desperate. When the chaplain arrived, she could only whisper, I'm lost. My life is ruined. I have no hope. They talked for a little while, and then the pastor, as he looked around the room, noticed a picture frame with a pretty girl in it. He asked, who is this? And for the first time, she brightened up 
And she said, that is Terry, my daughter. She is the only beautiful thing left to me. The chaplain went on to ask, do you mind if I ask you a question? She said, go ahead. Would you still call Terry your daughter if she had done something bad? Or maybe if something horrible had happened to her? Maybe none of her friends wanted to talk to her anymore or spend time with her. Would you still love her? Well, the woman said, what kind of question is that? Of course I would love her. That's what mothers do. If everyone else deserted her, I'm going to be there for her. My love is so strong for her. The minister continued by saying, even though that was a hard question for me to ask, it was an important one for you to answer. You see, I want you to know how much God, your heavenly father, loves you. Just as you have love for your daughter, God has love for you, his child in Jesus Christ. And because of what Jesus Christ has done, in some ways it is like the Lord God, our Heavenly Father, has a picture of you. You matter to him. When you are at the end of your life, when you get to the point where you seem just to be hanging on by a thread, remember that God sent his son into this world so that you may be able to hold on to him. Actually, God sent his son into this world so that he can hold on to us and we respond by clinging to him and the promises that we have in Jesus. And this is what brings us hope. That is what we see happening in the gospel lesson for today. That's what Jesus wanted Jairus to know. You remember, Jairus had just received word that his daughter was dead. At that moment, Jairus was hopeless and helpless. But before the grieving father could even say a word, Jesus said to him, do not be afraid, just believe. And then Jesus told Jairus, along with you and me, why fear does not have to be the final word in life. Going to the man's house, walking past the mourners, walking past those who laughed at Jesus, Christ went to the side of the bed, the girl, and said, little girl, I say to you, get up. And she did. She lived. The story of this girl raised from the dead, along with a woman healed, healed after 12 years of sickness, were written to give you and me something to hold on to. So that in whatever bad situation that we find ourselves in, whether we feel that we're just holding on by a thread, remember that a thread of Jesus' clothing was all that the woman needed in order to be healed. And the healing of that sick woman, as well as the, the raising of, of a girl who was 12 years old, who had died, was meant to give you and me a glimpse of the power, as well as the compassion of Jesus Christ, as well as to give you and me a preview of what our future will be. After all the pain and the heartache and the sorrow and the disappointment that we experience here on earth, after our death, God is going to raise us up and we're gonna have a glorious life. Therefore, continue to hang on to Jesus. Cling to him with confidence. Cry out to him for help because Jesus, because he came to die and rise again for us, we can trust that, that his promises will come true. With faith in Jesus and his promises, we have something that we can hold on to that will be strong enough to get us through Whatever trial or tribulation comes our way, even though it may seem like at times we are holding on by just a thread, holding on to Jesus is all that we need. Amen. Could it be that my God would welcome me 
into this mystery. Say, take this bread, take this wine, now the simple may divine for any to receive. By your mercy we come to your table. By your grace you are making us faithful. Lord, we remember you, and remembrance leads us to worship, and as we worship you, our worship leads to communion, we respond to your invitation, we remember We are officially in the, the season of summer at this time. There's many things that we do, but what is one thing we should not forget to do? Let's not forget about our God and praising him and worshiping him. What a wonderful God we have. One who loves us, and it's because of that, with that we have life now and forever. And so as we conclude our service, we invite you to join us as we pray the prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our, our Father, Father 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. beginning of this worship service, we talked about the promises that we make before the altar. And isn't it a joy that every day we can come before God? It doesn't have to be in a church setting, but we can come before our God every day of our life and recommit again the joy we have in serving him. And until next week, when we see you again online, 
we ask that the Lord would watch over you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.